Welcome to Baby and Us, a series of short videos to help you feel calm, confident and connected with your new baby. I'm Leah. And I'm Susanna. And we'll also be joined by some of our amazing parent group leaders who will share real life experiences with their own babies. So now we're going to move on to think about um, baby sleep. I want you to take a moment to think about how your baby sleeps and what have you noticed since they were born in terms of the, any changes. What I want you to also think about now is what is normal for baby sleep. And is there anything that you would like to change about your baby's sleep? I was in a group of mums that um, had babies all around the same time and we it felt like definitely my baby was sleeping the worst because people would go on the would be texting saying oh they slept through the night or you know they only had one wake up tonight um and then I found out one, at one point that one of the mums thought sleeping through the night was uh going to bed at, going to sleep at 11 and waking up at four and so <laughs> <laughs> it made me realise that people just have really different expectations different. and yeah. definitions of mm-hmm. what uh, mm-hmm. kind of how a baby sleeps and what sleeping through the night is, and that actually um, we we were doing fine. We were, we were doing fine for us, and I needed to kind of hold on to that. I think it's something to hold on to that it is not normal for babies to sleep for long periods of time, especially when they're newborns. Some babies do, some babies don't. It depends on that baby and and what their kind of makeup for sleep is, I guess. Um, And some babies will struggle to nap through the day. So just like you said, Susanna, there's going to be a friend, a neighbour, a somebody who's going to have a baby who does this wonderful, I don't know, from 10 till 4 sleeping. And then there'll be another baby who doesn't. And with my son, he would sleep for two, three hours quite happily during the day. Whereas my daughter no way completely different baby and needed her sleep more at night time than she did during the day she was more occupied and wanted to play and do things and look around in the day whereas at night time she was quite happy to go to sleep so Mm -hmm. two different children two different expectations and it's just about managing that and just to come back to what you said they're both completely normal very much so i look at like the science behind it and the children's developmental stages and you know roughly that children will um do shorter naps uh, and cat naps and not really have a rhythm for the first eight weeks and you know then that actually they will sort of drop to more like a two nap pattern and then they'll drop to a, a one nap pattern that may be after lunch when they were very little uh, they they both used used to sleep quite well one of the one of the twins was always slightly more anxious she was slightly tenser than the other one was very relaxed the, the very relaxed one was used to suck a thumb and so and she used to drop off to sleep very very easily uh, the other twin was was slightly more tense um, and uh, but but she would so long as she was comfortable and uh, and and happy and had plenty to eat, she too wasn't too bad. And we tried to get them, um, tried to get them to sleep at a reasonable time um, every evening. Well, and we had a routine for it. You know, the, the bath, the book, the story, the drink, bed. It is normal for babies to not sleep very well in the night and to have broken sleep. But if lack of sleep is something that is having an impact on you and your and your well-being it is something that you can do something about so there are things that you can do so we're going to talk about some tips to encourage good sleeping so you probably already have a few of these actually yourself that you'll have noticed from um from having your baby there'll be things that you've worked out so now might be a good time to just pause the video for a second and uh try to think about what you've learned about your baby's sleep and how you've learned to help your baby to sleep. So take a moment. Some of the things that we often hear in the group are separating sleep times from wakeful times, separating night from day, making sure the sleep environment is cool, dark and quiet, making sure you have a consistent 
uh, time that the baby goes to sleep and the consistent time that they wake up within about a 30 minute window. Listening to white noise or soft music, um, so that might be a musical mobile to help the baby fall asleep. Finding out whether anyone else can help with the night feed. So if you've got a partner um, or if you're living with another um, adult who might be able to help. Helping babies to fall asleep on their own. So help them to learn to self-soothe. Um, trying to get the baby napping consistently and thinking about nap napping times. Um, particularly avoiding late naps, I suppose. Um, and developing a bedtime routine, so maybe bath, then a story, and then sleep. My daughter's only three weeks old, and my son's now two and a bit, but they're so different. And I think at the time, when you've just got one, you, you might talk to other parents and think, oh, I'm just getting this so wrong. Like, their babies just, they put them in the car and they just drift off to sleep, and... I didn't have one of those first time round. Uh, I, I had a baby who really needed motion and, and physical contact to sleep. So, um, so we would really, you know, do a lot of rocking, snuggling, um, skin to skin. We would um, use the sling a lot because it's kind of like they like they sort of think they're back in the womb, don't they? All wrapped up. Um, and walk my I got very fit walk miles and miles and miles with him in the sling to get his naps or to get him up to sleep um, and the car again was good for, for motion for driving him um, mm -hmm. but he's just always been a kid that's needed quite a lot of presence to to settle um, and breastfeeding really helped with that actually my, my daughter she seems quite different like she's much more so far touch wood <laughs> She, she will, she, she will like if she's tired and you fed her and you put her down and stroke her, but she will go to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's that, it, so if I'd, had, if I'd had them the other way around, I would have thought, oh, what am I doing wrong this time? With my second child, the sleep moment was a very difficult time for us as parents because she didn't sleep more than two hours in a row and we were very tired. But I remember that in some point when we know a better and we understand that she needs more time between the last bottle and sleep, and also that she can sleep before nine, uh, she sleeps so much better. One idea that people might suggest to help babies sleep is sleep training. Uh, people often have really strong opinions about whether sleep training is a good thing or a bad thing. So we're going to spend a bit of time thinking about it. This is where parents might try specific interventions to um, help their baby to get to sleep. And that could be things like controlled crying. So that's often what people have heard of, um, which is where a parent might leave the baby for a certain number of minutes to cry and to sort of maybe gradually increase that in the hope that the baby will learn to self-soothe. Um, and another um, technique that people might have heard of is gradual withdrawal, which is where you start off very close to the baby with your hands on your baby and then gradually move away and, and move further away from the baby's cot and out of the room. And again, it's sort of building up that ability for the baby to soothe themselves. What we'd like you to do is just take a minute to think about what some of the pros and cons of sleep training might be. Um, and just maybe jot some ideas down. We know that this can be a bit of a controversial topic. Some people um, get really, really strong opinions about whether it's a good thing or whether it's um, a, a less helpful thing. Um, so we thought we'd just go through the pros and cons first. So some of the pros might be that it can actually be really effective at helping babies to learn to self-soothe. Um, it can be less distressing for everyone in the long run if we, if you sort of do something, a, a short intervention that is effective. Um, and if lack of sleep is affecting your well-being, then it's helpful to know that there's something out there that can 
that can help and feel like you've got some kind of control over it can also be useful if there's someone else that's going to look after your baby mm. if you've got to work at night or you decide to get lucky and go out for the night um at least then you're able to hand over your baby and say oh, this is what they need this is what you have to do so if we think about the cons now um so I suppose the most obvious one is that it can be distressing for the baby um, and it can be distressing for the parent. If your baby's crying a lot and you're listening to your baby crying, that can be really, really upsetting for both of you. And that, that can be a really, really difficult experience. We'd recommend that you speak to a health visitor or a GP before trying this, um, just to make sure that there isn't another reason why your baby's struggling to sleep. There are some important points to remember. It's not right for everyone, so if your baby's sleep isn't a problem for you or if you just don't want to do it, you don't have to. It must be developmentally appropriate, so it isn't recommended before about six months of age. Speak to your GP or your health visitor for more information about sleep training and to find out what support is available for you locally. Finally, we'd like to finish with a song. Incy wincy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sunshine and dried up all the rain. So wincy wincy spider climbed up the spout again. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the session and I hope it's useful for you. We'll see you soon.